Hello everybody and welcome back to Punting Pioneer. I'm Corbin Hostler, as always with Cool Stuff Inc. Ready to bring you this deck this week. This is Golgari Soul Flayer. So I know I talked a couple weeks ago uh, when we ran into the, the Zombie Rally deck online that that was the deck I wanted to record with next. However, Jim Davis recorded with that deck a few weeks ago here on CSI. So make sure you go check out his video in the channel if you want to look at that deck it's really neat but this week we are bringing something equally cool it is soul flare so if you don't know soul flare is this weird delve card from fate reforged uh, it's a 4-4 but you can cast it for as little as two mana here the thing is if you delve away a creature with flying you get flying if you delve away a creature with First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Reach, Trample, or Vigilance, you get all of those abilities. So, our plan is pretty simple. We're going to fill up our graveyard with creatures with those abilities, and we're going to cast a Soul Flare. This deck is honestly really cool. So, let's just run through. This is the big one right here, right? This gives all the abilities you could ever want. Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Indestructible. Okay, so that is pretty cool. So... Then we've got a Rankle here. This will give you Flying in Haste. And it's a pretty good one by itself, which is really sort of the key part of this deck is that, yeah, these cards are great to double away with Soul Flare, but they're also just good cards in their own right. And that makes a big difference. Same with No Hide Ferox here. Yeah, it's a not even really C playing standard, but it is just a 6-6 six, six for four. It beats down pretty hard. And of course, it can give you Soul Flare Hexproof if you delve it away. Questing Beast, same thing. Keyword Soup here, plus a good four drop. Murderous Rider, you can get some Life Link in there. It's also just a generic removal spell that hits everything ronus death touch indestructible and again one of the better creatures in modern at that three drop spot so how are we going to fill the graveyard with these we're not just going to play our creatures and let them die we're going to fill the graveyard up with spells like gather the pack reveal the top five you put some in your hand the rest in your graveyard grapple with the past you look at the top three they need to return something from your graveyard to play this helps you bring back the soul flares to your hand from your graveyard to cast and it sort of helps you find them as you're churning through your deck and it is filling up your graveyard at the same time. Same with Seder Wayfinder here. Find you those land drops. We're only playing 19, so Seder Wayfinder, pretty important card, uh, but also fills up the graveyard. Then, of course, this is a great one here. Sylvan Karyatid. Giving Hexproof to your Soul Flare is huge, plus it accelerates you at the same time, and in a pinch, I guess, can fix your mana if you're stuck on a single color. Grizzly Salvage, probably the best one at filling the graveyard here. You look at the top five. You get a creature or land into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard, all for two mana at instant speed right Rounding things out with a lot with Troll. Again, just a card that's pretty powerful on its own. And you don't mind discarding cards here to put counters on it. It's got regeneration. It's a discard outlet for if you have Zatalpa in your hand or what have you. We are, in fact, only a green-black deck, as you can see here. So not a lot of ways to get the things into our graveyard. There's no Faithless looting in this format. But lot with Troll does a pretty good job at that. So onto the sideboard, pretty much what you'd expect out of a black-green deck. We've got some Thought Seizes, some Fatal Pushes. Uh, some Assassin Trophy, Escoos, all just generically good cards. Then we've got a couple Silver Bullets here. The Ashiok for the Searching of the Graveyard decks. Uh, the Aetherborn, this will put Death Touch Lifelink, also pretty good against Red decks. Prowling Serpapard and Savage Summoning. I do like these because... Uh, they make sure that your Soul Flare is going to resolve one way or another. Savage Summoning will put a 1-1 counter when it comes into play. Uh, you can even cast it as though it had Flash. So you can actually end of turn Soul Flare. Can't be countered. It gets a counter. And then you get to attack. It's a lot of counters, I just said in that sentence. And it's a pretty good card. Uh, and of course, Prowling Serper Pard, a 4-3 on its own. It says creature spells you control can't be countered. So everybody, that is the deck here on Punting Pioneer. I'm Corbin Hostler. Let's play some Golgari Soul Flare in Pioneer. Hello everybody, here we go with Punting Pioneer Soul Flare. So this hand seems pretty reasonable. We've got some land drops, we've got a grapple with the past, we've got the Lotleth Troll to pitch the Zatalpa. So this is what we want to do. We want Lotleth Troll to pitch the good cards out of our hand. We want Grapple to get back Soul Flares from our graveyard. And heck, I mean, I guess we even want... Uh, murderous rider to play the value card that it is here we can use it as removal we can use it to gum up the board it has a lifelink and it even gives your uh soul flayers lifelink so it looks like our opponent on the lotus field deck here so can't imagine this is a great matchup for us especially on the draw won't lie uh but i do like that we found a gather the pack so i'm gonna go ahead and lead with the troll here so that allows us to pitch a couple cards 
Uh, but I mean, our opponent having the turn two Sylvan Scrying on the play into the Lotus Field. This deck is honestly, this might be the deck that gets Dig Through Time banned. This deck is very powerful, very, very good. Uh, especially now, as you can see, Theros Beyond Death. It has Underworld Breach. So this is the big one. Each non-land card in your graveyard has Escape. It's Escape costs equal to the casting cost uh, plus Exiling Through Graveyard. It's the beginning of step Sacrifice Underworld Breach. So that turns out to not really be a problem when the deck... The deck, it's kind of tailor-made for it. It fills its graveyard with these lands from the Lotus Field in addition to all the spells it uses to filter through the deck. Uh, and then, of course, they're all very cheap, so they get to kind of, uh, you know, work out that way. So I'm going to go ahead and pitch a Murderous Rider here. And pitch the Zatalpa. I mean, we're going to do what we can. We're going to beat down for four here. I guess maybe I could make it five by throwing away... Man, I don't know. I don't really know how we're supposed to win, but this seems like it might be part of the plan. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now gather the pack and see if we can find us a Soul Flare. So we did find a Soul Flare. And you know what? We put cards into the graveyard we want into the graveyard. So, okay. We're definitely... You know, our opponent could easily just combo us here, but we're going to put some pressure on him because, look, we're going to exile... The Questing Beast, that's going to give Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste, Lifelink. Oh, by the way, it's also going to have Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. So, uh, like I said, we might just die right now. But, you know, on the other hand, we'd be attacking our opponent for 8 plus 6 from this. That's 14. If we drew a creature or land even, right? Creature or land, we could grapple back another creature to throw away to the uh, to the Lotleth Troll. I mean, we could actually put together 15 points of damage here for our own turn four kill um, if our opponent doesn't just kill us. And, wow, are they passing the turn back? Are we actually going to... Oh, no, I only have one black mana! Uh-oh. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Better lucky than good, am I right? <laughs> wow! What a game! What a game of Magic the Gathering. All right, we're going to grapple... And we are going to return this uh, Nullhide Ferox here to our hand. We're going to pitch the Nullhide Ferox and the Seder Wayfinder to the Lotleth Troll. That makes it a 7-6. Now we're going to exile Zatalpa, Questing Beast, Murderous Rider, and Ferox for good measure. Get some Hexproof in there. We have assembled Exodia and we are attacking for 15 damage. There's no way our opponent was going to lose this game. And now they're dead. They had everything they wanted, but we came up with a turn four Soul Flare kill. That's what you play for, everyone, right there. Now, I will admit I don't know what the heck to do. <laughs> I'm going to board in these Thought Seizes. Uh, I'm going to board out these Murderous Riders. Uh, I guess I want the trophies... My opponent showed us the, the weird Chronic Flooding card so that when they enchant their land, they put more cards in their graveyard to fuel the Underworld Breach. But I guess the Serper part, is this good? I guess Ashiok's kind of good. Um, I don't think we need the Ronus. I'm probably bored out of Karyatid, too. I don't know. I don't think I like... It's Scoos and Trophy that I'm thinking about, and I guess possibly Savage Summoning. Um... I think I like the Scoos more than the Trophy. Their whole thing is their land has Hexproof. Um, it doesn't matter, though. Win or lose this match, that game was incredible. So I'll board out a Ferox and I'll get a Scoos in. So our Soul Flares are a little worse, but our opponent has their own very focused combo deck, right? They they don't have a... It's not like we have to fight through a bunch of removal or counter spells. I'm sure they'll have some amount of those things, but well, this kind of puts it all to the test, right? Do we keep four lands, double thought seize, gather? I think I probably do. I'm happy to thought seize them twice. And then uh, we'll have Spell Mastery for Gather, find a couple creatures. This is a very slow way to get going. Certainly not putting together the insane turn four kill like we had last game. But uh, we do have some interaction with our opponent, who mulligan to six, by the way. So, uh, And there's a questing beast. So I, I like where we're going here. All right, that is a lot to look at, but whatever it is, you start with Sylvan Scrying. So we have the Sylvan Scrying out of their hand. Uh, they have a Thespian Sage, which can copy the Lotus Field. They have an Underworld Breach, which is sort of their combo card later. 
Um, they're going to strategic plan here, sure. Uh, so I think I'll be hitting the pour over the pages next. Draw three, untap two, then discard. I think that matters more than the Underworld Breach. I guess we'll see what they have here when I thought sees them again. Another gather, okay. Oops, slight misplay on my part. Don't think it matters, but I could have played an Overgrown Tomb Tap there. And so another strategic planning or the pour over the pages. So the thing is, pour over the pages is basically only good once they have assembled it, whereas strategic planning helps them get there. And since they don't have Sylvan Scry and they don't have Lotus Field, I think maybe we just keep them from, from getting there, right? And it gives us time to set up what we want to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and gather the pack here with Spell Mastery and see what happens. Is our opponent, do they have interaction? Oh, they're going to make a copy of the Botanical Sanctum. Sure thing. All right, so we have a Serpapard and a Karyatid. Yep, yeah, good enough. I'll take them both. Play out our land. Whoops, meant to click the Overgrown Tomb. I don't think that matters. Our opponent doesn't seem to be dealing, uh, to be to, to, to be using a lot of interaction. And next turn, we're just going to play a Questing Beast anyway. Set two life. Unlikely to make a big difference. And they played another land, so I guess they're going to cast. Uh, they're going to cast that pour over pages the hard way, but if it's not a combo pour over the pages, and just casting pour over the pages, then it's probably not so bad for us. Meanwhile, we're playing a fair game and getting on in here with questing beasts. So, all right, I put it down to fifteen. Next turn, I probably lead with gather in case we somehow get very lucky and we get to put. You know, say Questing Beast of Talpa into our graveyard and and draw a, a Soul Flayer, but we'll go Gather and then Serpent Part as a backup plan. Um, and look, so our opponent's fifth land was a, a Botanical Sanctum there, so they do, they've unlocked Pour Over the Pages now, and they can, even Underworld Breach, I wonder if it's worth it for them. They might do this here, but they already played... I, I don't know. I've not played this deck before, but it seems to me that Underworld Breaching to play Sylvan Scrying on their turn four, uh, on this turn, and getting... They are going to do that now, but they could have the Lotus Field in play ready to untap next turn as opposed to coming into play tapped, and then they have to spend a mana to untap it. So it just kind of impacts the, the total amount of mana they'll have access to. So we, they have one unknown, and now they're going to have a pour over the pages. Plus, we bought ourselves a lot of time, plus a Lotus Field. We bought ourselves a lot of time by uh, Thought Seizing uh, the one card earlier. And it's going to be a little difficult for them to go off here. Just drawing Soul Flare is pretty good, too. We can gather here and hopefully dump some stuff into our graveyard. There's a Zatalpa. And a questing beast? I like what I see. I get it to put two into my hand, huh? What if I don't want any of them? I guess I'll take the lot with troll. So this is going to get even more difficult for my opponent now. Because look, we have haste. We, we've got it all here. We're going to add hexproof for good measure. We're only going to put our opponent down to one. Or down to two, rather, with this hit. But that probably cuts off some stuff, maybe, from them. They can't lose any extra life. But either way, our cards are on the table quite literally here. Let's see if our opponent's able to combo off from two life here uh, with a Lotus Field in hand, not even in play, having already burned some cards out of their graveyard just to get set up. So they're definitely uh, behind here in these... The mana confluence, a uh, little awkward putting them down to... Well, I guess our own Urborg. Man, maybe I shouldn't have played that Urborg earlier. Would have actually restricted them for one mana this turn, and maybe more last turn, I don't know. Not something I considered, I'll say that. I mean, to be honest, I meant to go for the Overgrown Tomb when I did play it, but uh, that's uh, something to consider. And we'll see if they'll get there. They played Lotus Field. They have Pour Over the Pages if they want it. Oh, they're going to go ahead and copy the Lotus Field. Which means they must have a Hidden Strings here. Yeah, this could get pretty ugly for us. Hidden Strings untaps both of these, so my opponent now has access to 6 mana. They get a pour over the pages, untap those again. So, yeah. 
Wow, that Urborg play might have actually got me. I, I won't, you know, it was an accident. I, I didn't really mean to play it when I did, but I didn't consider it either. I didn't think about it. It was not a thought that, that went through my mind, but, uh, and uh, that might be, that's a note to pay if you decide to pick up this deck. Uh, something to consider, I guess, if you ever run into, into mana confluences. So that said, my opponent has to generate a lot of mana here. I mean, they're up to eight with this pour over the pages, and they will have a lot of cards, but I would say it's pretty hard for them to win from there, even given all of that. And as you can see, they didn't get there. We took it down. Whew, that was stressful. That was a little bit stressful. I won't lie. I thought maybe I was about to punt that game with that Urborg, but caught a break. Took it down. Soul Flayer, everybody here on Punting Pioneer. Let's get to the next one. All right, I won't lie. I'm a little worn out after that first game, uh, but I'm ready to Soul Flayer some more. So this hand, I have to ship it, unfortunately. Gosh. I have to ship this one too, I think. Oh no, here we go. Down to four. That's the one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep two lands. And I'm going to throw away... Well, I have the Lotlith Troll. I think we can put together a reasonable four-card hand here. I get to keep one more of these? I guess I pitch the Murderous Rider. Keep the lands. We're on the draw. We, we can cast a Lotlith Troll and we can pitch a Questing Beast to it, so... Uh, you know what? We've got a shot here. And now we have a Soul Flare. So, I guess as things go, it probably doesn't get much better than this uh, on a mulligan to four. We, our opponents explain some kind of energy brew over there. So we, we get to play our troll, hopefully resolve it. And there's a grapple. So, you know what? This is actually starting to shape up a little bit. If we can find a land on top, perhaps? We can even return a land with grapple. So... Uh, I don't know what our opponent's doing over there. They might have removal. They're just going to anticipate. Okay. Are we going to possibly put together a four-card win here? This is the kind of hand that could do it. If we get it, I mean, think about it. If we get to grapple some something bad, you know, says so if we get to grapple as a Talpa into our graveyard, oh, we're actually just going to have an insane soul flare on turn four. Which is pretty good on a on a mulligan to four. So all right, let's see if our opponent's ready to do things. Now they're strategic planning, so they're setting up for something over there. I don't know if this is what the uh, the storm deck looks like. They have a caryatid of their own, a wishclaw talisman. Well, okay, it's gonna be some sort of combo ish deck over there, I think. But let's see if they're ready for the soul flare, and they're gonna fatal push us. Okay, so we'll throw away the questing beast, and after that, our troll just goes away. So uh, that's reasonably fine. It means we can delve it away. And there's the Overgrown Tomb. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Well, that's an instant. I'm just going to play this lane tapped. Pass the turn. I still don't know what they're doing. They're ether hubbing. And I believe neither of these have energy counter. Oh, they have one energy counter. So they can make one colored mana right now. And they've, they're just going to use it to play Sylvan Carry Tid. Okay. That'd be some kind of combo deck. I mean, for all I know, this is Wishclaw Talisman. Is how the, uh, it's just the Lotus field deck and that's how they win now all right so we're gonna grapple uh okay so i'm gonna take the wayfinder i think and now we have another wayfinder so i kind of have an option here i'm good think so i can make a trampoline i, I don't have indestructible though uh i don't know if that matters i mean i can make a vigilance death touch haste trample Soul Flare right now, or I can be a little greedy, try to Wayfinder into another land, see if we hit a Zatapa or something. I think I like that play, given that my opponent also is, I guess, representing some kind of Counterspell mana. And we are going to get the opportunity, at least, so I'm not going to... I don't know what their deck's doing, but they cast Fatal Push, and they don't have a Swamp, so I'm just going to take the Swamp here. And I guess at this point, I just have to go for it, because this is... Fairly insane for us. I mean, that's a Zatalpa, a Questing Beast, a Lotlith Troll. That's, that's, this already has Trample, right? So I actually can keep my Lotlith Troll in there. I mean, but this is everything we want.
Okay. Well, if my opponent has a counter spell, I will be big sad, but they don't. So, despite the mulligan to four, we have assembled Exodia here. Death Touch, Double Strike, Flying Haste, and Destructible Trample Vigilance. Hit you for eight. I guess the one thing we did not have, not quite Exodia, we, <laughs> I don't even know if I can make that reference. Uh, it's, it doesn't have lifelink, but you know what? As our opponent plays in Evolving Wilds with no energy searching for their colors, I say deal with this. We mulligan to four. You had a fatal push. You deal with what we're doing. If you can, you got this game. Sylvan Awakening. All right. Sure thing. And pass the turn. What the heck? is going on they have reach wait a minute until your next turn they're indestructible oh they can just block because they have reach that's a weird ability but sure i guess this doesn't really matter then actually it does we still get in damage we have death touch <laughs> we get in two damage this way and then I can follow up with another Wayfinder, restock the Graveyard, uh, and play out a carry it hit on top of that. So we got in a little bit of damage, and now let's go with the Wayfinder, see what we hit. Should like a temple or something? Something to interact with the top of my deck. Find a land that does something. Or an Overgrown Tomb, but you know what? Putting Rankle and Zatalpa into the Graveyard, so I mean... We're going to have to find, obviously, another Soul Flare, or, or we might just win, but uh, finding another Soul Flare, we're ready to go again. That's Flying Haste, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Indestructible. If we were to find, uh, we don't have another Soul Flare in there, so Grapple wouldn't necessarily do it, but I have to say, I'm impressed, you know. The great thing about Pioneer, you know, Modern, as our opponent digs through time here, Modern's a format where I kind of think the classic pod decks and later Abzan company decks where they would try to combo off. The thing with those decks is one of the best cards in them was Gavany Township. And if you don't know what that does, I don't blame you. It's a rare land from original Innistrad that it, it makes colorless mana. And then for, um, I believe it's two colorless green and white and you tap it, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. But you know what? That was one of the best cards in the deck because the deck won that way. They would just, they'd have this infinite combo with Viscerous Seer, Malira, and Kitchen Finks or Red Cap in them to kill you that you'd have to, that threat would always be there and you would have to deal with it. And that was always something you had to be concerned about. But at the same time, they were just this court of calling collected company value deck. And sometimes they just put a bunch of counters on their Birds of Paradise and kill you with it. You know, these days, Modern's way too powerful for that to be a thing. Um, and it makes me sad because I think that was one of the coolest parts of the format back then is that sometimes things didn't go according to plan. I mean, even with fetch lands, occasionally your mana wouldn't be perfect. Our opponent might just combo us out here, by the way. But you had to have a backup plan. You had to have a reasonable backup plan. And these days between uh, the London Mulligan and everything else, that's just really not a thing. You know, those decks, I don't even, they don't even play Gavity Township or anything like it anymore. It doesn't matter. But... Now we come to Pioneer, we mold to four, and all of a sudden we're looking at cards in our deck that, hey, if we draw wrinkle, wrinkles on our deck, but Questing Beast off the top, Wrinkle off the top, we just play Fair Magic at this point and be doing perfectly fine. And, and that would absolutely be a thing. Um, even when we don't assemble a giant Soul Flare, obviously it helps that we did. Um, but I just love, I think formats are better when, when that's sort of the way it is. So... Meanwhile, our opponent over here is uh, Jeskai Ascendancy. Is that it? Anyways, they've got a Jeskai Ascendancy. They're trying to combo off. They have one card in their hand to do it. They, they played the Sylvan Awakening. So um, the way that works is it turns all their creatures into land. And because Jeskai Ascendancy untaps your creatures when you cast a spell, you get a lot of value out of that, right? You continue to make a bunch of mana. You get to keep drawing through your deck. But unfortunately for our opponent here, they... Uh, they don't seem to have comboed us to death. It's just a value attack coming in with a Sylvan Awakening. Uh, we didn't get anywhere. So, I mean, I'll swing for eight here, but I guess it's conceivable that we don't win this game. This knocks our opponent down to, I guess they get to soak up two of it. So it's only going to put him down to four. So if they 
have, I guess, another Sylvan Awakening here, we're in trouble. Another Sylvan Awakening, even if they just had the Sylvan Awakening, well, they need to, that would untap them. They'd, 15, I think that's lethal. And you know what? Wish Claw Talisman probably makes that happen. Well, that's unfortunate. We comboed and it wasn't good enough. We molded to four. We had a turn four crazy soul flare and it was not good enough. Although I have to say, it wasn't Exodia. It did not have lifelink. And as a result, I wish, I'd sure wish I had that 24 life points or whatever it would be right now and be sitting at 38 instead of 14 and not be dead to this uh, Sylvan Awakening. But. All right, so it makes them two twos, not three threes. So perhaps we're not dead, but I have to imagine if they're tutoring here, they're going to have something that gets us. <laughs> if I untap, I'll have another Soul Flare, but something tells me I will not be getting that opportunity. There's the Sylvan Awakening. I, I guess it's not quite enough, though. So, well, they're going to be three. They're, they're just going to become creatures when this resolves, so they're not going to be pumped by the Jeskai Ascendancy quite yet. So my opponent, and they're tapped, so they need another spell here. Looks like their last card in hand is a spell. If they'd hit a land or something that turn... They might not have got there, but finding the Anticipate, I assume, dooms us here because that means their their lands untapped, their 3 threes. They now, in fact, just have a lethal. All right, good game. On to the sideboard, where I do think we have a pretty reasonable plan for dealing with them. Get the Thoughtseize is in here. Get the Trophies in here. Um, I guess get the Serpapard. Get rid of some of this stuff. Murderous Riders. I mean, while Lifelink would have been nice, obviously, if the deck really combos off, it's it's not really going to do that much for us. So, and we got to cut something, right? Huh. The question is, how much counter magic do I think that they play? I'm I'm honestly not sure. Um. So I kind of like the Serper part as a hedge. Maybe we'll draw it. it. It can beat down. It beats down fairly well. I mean, it's four power for three mana. Um, hmm. You cut one more here. I'm going to cut a carry it, Ted. I think this works here. Um, and the question is whether we want a Savage Summoning, but I don't think that I do. We get to go first, and you know what? And seems pretty reasonable to me. We've got the troll on two. Uh, we've got, if we can find lands, uh, and hopefully the grapple helps with that if we need it, but I'd love to just hit a land, go troll, serpapard, Ashiok. You know, Ashiok keeping our opponent from searching their library with Wishclaw Talisman, actually pretty relevant. You know, it's a static ability that is sometimes not as, you know, as important as the graveyard, exile graveyard clause on it. But, hey, it gets the job done <laughs> against stuff like a tune with Ether as well, I suppose. Going to leave with the troll, though. It taxes our opponent to actually deal with it. Um, I think that's what I want to do anyways. Get it down while we can. It beats down in its own right. Be a three power when we pitch this questing beast to it. Uh, we drew a gather here, so land off the top is the best draw, uh, but I don't hate where we're at. If not, I can I can grapple. All right, so it's Paradise Druid, huh? Okay. Let's see what we hit. We hit our own Caryatid. Hmm. I guess I'm going to attack and see what happens. I don't think my opponent's going to block. All right, so I will go ahead and throw away this questing beast here. And I'm just going to play my Karyatid. I really want to be... I mean, Grapple is not a guarantee of hitting the land we need. I really just want to play Ashiok next turn. So this has got to be the play. This also blocks the Paradise Shrewd for what it's worth. You know, which it may come up in terms of actually protecting Ashiok. Now, if my opponent does have the Jeskai Ascendancy here, they have one energy left to make red mana, uh, or obviously the Paradise Shirt, so they do have it. You know, depending on what my opponent's last card is, we could just die right now. All right, we didn't just die, so that's step one. Step two is playing this Ashiok, 
and hoping that my opponent is really needing to search their library to get their engine rolling. We can also go ahead and mill ourselves here, which has value given that we have the grapple. And there we go, we've got a, a Zatalpa into the graveyard. I guess I attack. I said, this is kind of a loose attack. I really wish we'd hit land so I'd have a blocker for the Paradise Sure. The thing is, you know, my opponent could have just, you know, tap the Druid for mana, play a spell, untap, untap it. Uh, tap the Druid for mana, play a spell, untap it, attack Ashiok for four, and then play Wish Claw Talisman. Um, so it's not quite as good as we want it to be here. Uh, but you know what? There's only so much we can do. My opponent going for the strategic planning, I guess, is a start. I just don't know that keeping this back as a blocker when we can't regenerate it does a ton. And they they went ahead and just threw away a, a wish claw talisman, so they either are duplicates or they haven't considered killing Ashiok here. I just feel like I have to put some pressure on their life total. I think trying to, to keep it back when and we have two creatures to pitch, so we can make it a 5-4. Without regeneration, it still would trade, right? That just still wouldn't be very good for us. Um, and we'll see what we can do. If we hit land, we can try to gather into a, uh, into a Soul Flare. We do not have Spell Mastery, unfortunately. Let's see how my opponent wants to go about this. They're resolving this Anticipate here. Obviously, the way we want it to go is we want to be Thoughtsey in the Jeskai Ascendancy before they play it, but I, I don't think I could mulligan this hand when it was so well set up. Um, it's just possible, hey, our opponent has good draws too, and it looks like they might have had one of them as we stumbled a bit on mana. You know, this, this game probably looks a lot different in the world where I have uh, a, another mana and I don't have to either, one, tap my Lotlith Troll or... Uh, to, uh, we have the mana to regenerate a lot of the troll. I don't have to tap the Karyatid. And we have a blocker to protect Ashiok, keeping them from tutoring on future turns. Um, in addition to, obviously, you know, enacting our game plan a, a little better. But I guess that's not even a concern, as our opponent's just going to let us untap with Ashiok. So, and we hit our land, which I guess, unfortunately, will come into play tapped. So, all right, let's mill ourselves, see what we hit. I mean, hitting land is a start. I don't know that exiling my opponent's graveyard is particularly relevant, although they are responding with a dig through time here, so a little bit relevant. Preserving their one energy by using the druid, because it's going to untap, obviously. All right, we'll see what they reveal here. Yeah, a little punished by the, the Woodland Cemetery. <laughs> uh, a little unfortunate that our two lands were, were Bloomy Marshes and the cemetery will come into play tapped. Which gives me kind of an interesting decision on what I want to do here. I could grapple, return a land, play a Karyatid, and I have plenty of mana next turn. Who we hit? All right. Okay, well, now we have Spell Mastery for the Gather, if that's the play we want to do. I think that's what I'm going to do. We, if our opponent just has so much that they're going to kill us, then I think that's just what they have. I mean, there's not much we can do about it, right? Uh, but what I can do here is Gather and see what we find. Looks like we're just going to find a lot with Troll. Not a Soul Flare. So we have to pass the turn back. Uh, and our opponent... Has pretty much everything they need, right? They're gonna fatal push our troll. Well, that's pretty good too. Um, I guess I let that resolve. The troll doesn't do much for us right now. Do I have a carry tit in my graveyard? Is I could pitch this other, I could pitch the carry tit in my hand, which is probably what I'm going to do so that we have a hexproof option. I have to imagine after 
digging through time, though, that our opponent is just going to kill us. Now they, they get to loot. Uh, I imagine it will be a big combo turn for them here. I could regenerate the troll with the carry tip, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to let the troll die. Uh, that way we have a blocker to try to protect Ashiok. Like I said, I don't know that Ashiok's hugely relevant, but we don't have much to lean on right now, so we've got to give it a shot uh, at, at protecting it. So I will throw away the Karyatid so that we have the ability to... Because uh, to, basically we're going to need to grapple into a Soul Flare... Uh, and the thing is, if we do, it's going to have everything we want to have. It's going to have a Questing Beast as a Talpa. I guess it wouldn't have Lifelink, um, but it'll have everything else that we need. But our opponent, I imagine, is just going to kind of go off here. You're going to get to see what this what this Jeskai Ascendancy deck is capable of after all the card selection they had. I mean, really, the kicker, game one, we both had good draws. I mulled to four. They had a better draw. And here in game two... Uh, Again, I mean, we had a pretty capable draw, but our opponent just had the turn three ascendancy. And we stumbled a bit on lands. These lands are going to get very, very big, and we have exactly one blocker. So it really doesn't take much before we're dead. So they're going to have, they have five attackers. Uh, so as soon as these become six sixes, the game, or as soon as they become five fives, the game is just over because we're going to only block one. So... They are not very many spells away from that. Yeah, Sylvan Awakening plus Jeskai Ascendancy is a real thing. Um, you know, Thoughtseize is such a, a sort of a force in the format that it, it does kind of hold it down a little bit. But uh, I gotta say, sometimes you don't draw. Sometimes you don't draw your Thoughtseizes, and your opponent Jeskai Ascendancy combos you out. Uh, and it certainly appears that that is what has happened to us here. So they cast one more spell out of the million in their hand, and they're going to have enough. So uh, they're going big for it, too. They're going to put all this mana in their pool to play in a tune with Ether. It doesn't even resolve. It doesn't even do anything. That was the, the, the BM right there, the bad manners at the end, just to show that it didn't matter. Anyways, good games. Let's see if we can take one down here with Soul Flare. More Soul Flare action. This one, however, we have to ship. That's a mulligan. Here we go, though. I like this in the sense that it has lands i mean i think we're kind of priced into keeping this that said the hand itself is kind of got a long a big range of outcomes here if our opponent combos us off for instance uh frankly we're just going to be in trouble uh but if our opponent uh is playing creatures these murderous writers could come in handy and the temple gives us uh, the slightest bit of control over our draw step Let's see what we find bloomy marsh okay well, there's a the finding that third land is not bad given that we do have a four drop in hand. Um, our opponent probably going to opt if I had to guess here. Uh, I'm going to bottom this. I don't think I need the fourth land. I have the carry to to provide the fourth mana. That's certainly not going to be something we want. Our opponent, as predicted, does opt. So blue, red, something over there. See what they do. I don't know if I'll be able to find out what they do with it. Oh, is there a log? <laughs> Show game log. There we go. Uh, all right. So they uh, put the card on the bottom of their library. And, oh, they got the pretty lands. I should have played with the Nyx lands. Pokemon lands. What I've heard both. I, I, I'm going to call them Nyx lands, though. All right. So they're passing back. They could have counter magic open for us here. And... I think even given that we hit Grizzly Savage, the play's still going to be to just play out the Karyatid, and if they want to counter that, yeah, so be it. We have a third lane to follow it up. Uh, if they're going to take in our draw step, don't really know what that means, besides they have a stop they don't realize they have. Uh, but let's see if our Karyatid resolves. Uh, maybe not. Quench? Sensor? All right, Sensor. Well... I guess I don't really mind having my Karyatid censored because, one, we, we have some, you know, we have three mana. We have Grizzly Savage. I'm not too concerned about that over the, the long term here. Uh, and, hey, that's X-Proof, which could be relevant later if we are able to delve that away to a Soul Flare. Our opponent with the old school strategic planning. So they are, in fact, strategically planning in that art. 
that set is that from? I think that's a Magic Online set. All right, so they put a couple lands into their graveyard. They are going to pass the turn back here, and we do have a window to resolve something, unfortunately. I don't know that any of these cards are ones that uh, we're dying to resolve right now. I'm going to pass the turn back. I guess if they were to play... I, I have no idea what their deck is doing yet, but if they were to play a young Pyromancer or something, we could murder us right or it. If not, we'll fire off a Grizzly Savage on the end step. And hey, I mean, if they tap out for something here, then they could probably guess what we're playing at this point. We've seen, seen the carry tid, but if they tap, we could just Grizzly Savage into Soul Flayer, put the right things into the graveyard, and have the potential... To really do something scary here, they're just going to strategically plan yet again. Leave the top three, put one in your hand, the rest into your graveyard. It's a sorcery speed, anticipate, except it fills up your graveyard for dig through time and what have you. And it did have another land, so we're Grizzly Savage on the end step here and see what happens. Can't imagine them countering this, and they don't. Um, looks like we get a land or a wayfinder. I guess I'm going to go with the wayfinder here. Serves a dual purpose. This is quietly does some of the just does just does some awesome work in the format. Uh, fills up your graveyard as well as uh, I'm going to play around sensor here this time. Maybe I should have slammed the questing beast since we have a second one, but let's see what we hit. Well, none of those are lands. Uh, it is, however, a couple of Zatalpas into the graveyard, so that's not so bad. Yeah, there's an argument for just playing Questing Beast because if it does get censored, uh, we have a second one to follow it up. But I think playing the Wayfinder hedges a little more, and it's not a bad play. I mean, filling up our graveyard is never a bad plan with this deck. Our opponent, by the way, is just on, you know, mono card selection here. All anticipates, strategic plannings, uh, opting. I have no idea what they're setting up for. I'll be honest. Like, I, I'm excited to find out. Maybe it's just a control deck with all the card selection in the world. Yeah, these murderous writers have certainly not seemed very great, but who knows? Maybe they're going to play something huge. You know, maybe it's a. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't even pretend to know what this blue red deck could be right now. They are thinking it through on this anticipate though. All right, so they're going to untap. For their fifth turn here, so, so far we've managed to resolve a Seder Wayfinder, and they're going to anticipate again, huh? Well, these Delve cards are powered up, that's for sure. Dig through time. Got plenty of fodder if they have one in their hand. They're going to Tipple of Epiphany. More selection. All right, well, does any of this lead to anything? I guess not yet. They, they still have a Counterspell up. And we still get censored for what it's worth. And now a gather. So I have the option of gathering or questing beast. I'm going to questing beast. Because the thing is, if they counter the questing beast, if it does get censored, like I said, one, we have another one in our hand. Uh, and it doesn't actually. They just have an omen of the sea because they what they really needed to do was scry a little more. So <laughs> omen of the sea. This is my favorite of this cycle, by the way. I've been playing a lot of arena Theros. Uh it, it, it cycles. It's a you, you enters the battlefield, scry two, and then you get a draw card immediately. So we get to crack our opponent for five here. Um, we have another questing beast. If they were to remove this one, but it, it, this is a good position for us because we're beating them down with questing beast. Uh, and if they do kill it, we can gather hopefully to find a soul flare and then exile the questing beast. Um, with all of that said, though, I mean. I have to assume if you're playing a billion anticipates and dig through times and offs and strategic plannings and temples and omens of the sea, you want to be on turn six with 15 life like this deck is. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if somehow this is all playing into their hands. But I mean, hey, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to play gather the pack. That's what I'm going to do. But <laughs> uh, troll or caryatid, I will take the troll here. Oh, I could get both. Uh, there's already a carry tin in our graveyard. I'll take both. Let's move to combat, see what happens. They could sack the omen to scry. And there's got to be some sort of two-card combo deck, right? It's the only thing that makes sense. They just have all this selection to try to find the two cards to put together to kill us, right? That that has That's the only thing that makes sense. 
And I didn't play the troll there. All right, chronic flooding. All right, this has to be part of a combo. Whenever enchanted land becomes tapped, its controller puts the top three cards of the library into their graveyard. So they're milling themselves. Oh, it's an, okay, there we go. It's an underworld breach deck. So underworld breach is resolved. This means that each non-land card, it's a Theros Beyond card here. Each non-land card in their graveyard has escape. It's escape cost equal to its converted mana cost plus exiling three. So, and they're playing hidden strings. So it's a Lotus Field deck without Lotus Field. More chronic floodings and sensors. I I don't know what they're doing. I won't lie to you. <laughs> they can do stuff for a long time, though. All right, hidden strings. These they don't produce much mana, though. I would. The whole reason hidden strings works in the Lotus Field deck. Okay. I mean, the thing about escape. Is it goes infinite, right? They're they have a lab man at the what? Is, oh, they fast as Oracle. Okay, I'm on board. Yeah, I think we're dead. So I I make it. I, I hadn't seen this deck yet. I'm I'm figuring it out on the fly here. But what happens is chronic flooding is a self combo with hidden strings with underworld breach. So hidden strings is exile three to escape it under with with underworld breach out. And while the hidden strings does just go, um. It goes neutral, right? They, they tap to, to untap it, but the chronic flooding means that they can do that as much as they want. And at the end, I have to assume, after having cycled through their library, they will cast a Thassa's Oracle out of their hand, which is a blue-blue card from Theros that uh, has a lot of words on it, but essentially says you look at the top X cards of your... or I think it's the top X cards, top X cards of your library. X is your devotion to blue. Uh, you could have put one of them on top of your deck. Then it has a second sentence that says, if you have no cards in your library, you win the game. So my opponent is going to keep running this hidden strings combo here uh, with... <laughs> so it, it's hidden strings plus chronic flooding plus underworld breach plus Thassa's Oracle. So I guess that each non-land card in your graveyard has escaped. So it actually all all of the pieces except underworld breach can be in your graveyard i mean hidden strings and chronic flooding can both be in your graveyard there's a fastest oracle i spoke of they have to have one in hand though right no they can get this back too and it costs two mana all right i'm in this deck's kind of cool it took a billion turns to opt and all of that and i i don't i don't know if this this certainly doesn't seem better than the lotus field version of the deck, but look at that. There's two different decks that are playing Chronic Flooding and <laughs> Chronic Flooding and Hidden Strings. Hidden Strings is just the most broken combo card in Pioneer, I guess. Uh, interesting. Well, I'll let them have their fun with their combo here, but uh, the difference between this and the Lotus Field deck is that those Assassin's Trophies in our, our sideboard are a lot better against this deck. And you know what else is pretty good against this deck? The Scavenger News we have and the Ashiok we have. Uh, although I guess when they start comboing, they can kind of combo all at once. So Ashiok doesn't necessarily get them. But either way, it's a cool deck, but it certainly seems weaker than Lotus Field because we just have so many more cards that can interact with it. The Super Lotus Field deck has Hexproof and uh, that's pretty hard to beat. So <laughs> that in this case though, as our opponent wins with Thassa's Oracle, we will move on to the sideboarding game and board in all of the pieces we have for it. So Thoughtseize, uh, Scavenging News, Assassin's Trophy, all of this. Um, what do I sideboard out? These Ferox out of here. Murderous Riders, definitely not needed because the ability from Thassa's Oracle goes on the stack, so it doesn't even matter if we were to kill it in response. I don't need Ronus. Um, I did board in the one Savage Summoning, uh, let's see if we get it. Yeah, maybe we'll mize one and have fun with that, right? Caryatid out. Although I actually do like Caryatid. Um, I like keeping the Rankle, kind of. I mean, I guess Rankle is just worse than the other questing beasts, though. Um, for the most part. I could run with 61 cards. Always an option. Now I'm going to board out another Caryatid here, I think. We're a little lighter on uh, on mana sources, right? Boarding out the carry tits, but we still have all these other cards that find us our mana sources. And now we have interaction. So let's see what we can do. 
Our opponent must be deep in the cyborg tank as well. That was cool, though. It took me a minute to figure out what was going on. Uh, but once we got there, I appreciate I appreciate the coolness of the deck. So the neat thing about their deck is that, uh, yeah, Underworld Breach is not Pass in Flames. It's not just Instants and Sorceries. It's any non-land card, and you're going to do it over and over again. So the whole Hidden Strings chronic flooding combo is just a thing right that, that it's just a self-contained combo and all it starts is with getting those two cards into your graveyard even and then playing underworld bridge with enough mana to set it all up uh and then you eventually mill the thassa's oracle and you get it so you know i said it was weaker than lotus field and you know it probably is uh because it's, it's i think it's weaker to graveyard hate but the thing is it's it's kind of a one card combo deck right if you have enough mana then underworld breach is actually just a one card combo with everything else if you have a stocked graveyard all right what do we have though so no thought seizes in this one but lot with troll gather the pack ashiok grizzly salvage i think this is pretty reasonable for us we even get to start things off with a scry for a wayfinder which yeah i guess i'll keep wayfinder on two seems a little better than lot with troll given we don't have anything we really want to discard All right, so we'll run this out there, see what we hit. I do have to basically consider whether or not my opponent cycled a sensor, which is interesting. Um, I was going to say, and we're putting as a top into the graveyard, so that's good. I have to consider whether I want to run Ashiok into sensor mana. Um, frankly, I, I probably don't. I'll probably play land to play Lotlith Troll here. I'll probably play Grizzly Savage, actually, on their end step. Or another Seder Wayfinder. Hmm. I think Salvage is the higher upside play because it can find the creature for us. So, you know, we could we could just Salvage a, a, a Questing Beast into our graveyard and, and find a Soul Flare with it and then be good to go. Um, I think I'm okay letting them resolve this and still just going for the Salvage on their end step. The thing is... Their deck does, it, it's got to have a lot of, it, it's got to either cast all the pieces or have some time to set up its graveyard, um, which can be, you know, maybe not easy for it. So let's salvage and see what we can do here. That's a soul flare. Unfortunately, that was both of our assassin's trophies too. Uh, all right, so I think the plan here has got to be fairly simple. It is to, well, I say that. Again, I have to consider sensor. Yeah, this is hard. I think that I'm going to... So the thing is, I kind of want to gather and then soul flare, right? Because I... Uh, that allows me to hit a haste creature pre-combat, but I really don't want to run a soul flare into removal. Uh, I'm sorry, into sensor. Um, that's the one counter spell I can play around, right? Like I can't play around negate or whatever, a billion other counter spells they might have here, but I can play around sensor, so I'm going to choose to do that. Um, we don't really have anything, you know, this is sort of a, a worse, not the ideal sort of del, but I mean, it's just a Zeltapa, but... Just the top is pretty good because it did resolve. It's flying double strike, vigilance, and destructible trample. So that is still a lot. And the thing is, we still get a. I'm going to go with the Wayfinder here. I think gathers. If one's going to get censored, I want it to be Wayfinder. It does seem like that's not happening from our opponent. I'll take land. That's another Zotop into our graveyard. So next turn, we'll have some options. I can. Again, it's going to come down to what we choose to play around because I could gather into the into try to find a soul flayer and a questing beast, um, and then play that one, and we'd be attacking for lethal at that point. Alternatively, I could play Ashiok. So my opponent trying to set everything up here. They're going to have four mana that. Well, they have three mana in their main phase. They're tapping mana in their main phase. That's good for me. Unless we're just dead. It's a chronic flooding. And they're going to give us a turn back. So, okay. Uh, 
There's a soul flare. I think given that we drew soul flare, we have to go for the gather. And then I'll run this out. They don't have sensor. I'm going to play Ashiok anyways, but I'm going to take the opportunity to try to just win. Um, it does not look like we did that, unfortunately. Let's I'll take the Serpent Pard here. I can get two. Uh, sure, give me a carry All right, so we can't just win, which is unfortunate because there is no haste creature in our graveyard. Um, I can make another, you know, crazy, scary Zoltapa up Soul Flare, but if our opponent combos us off, that doesn't matter. So I'm instead going to do the one thing I can do to attempt to interact with them, which is to Ashiok them. And the thing is, I don't know that it's going to matter. Um, you know, it's I, I would not be at all surprised if they just have it here. You know, we had we had a shot. We just needed to find a, uh, you know, they're at eight. Right? If we had find a, found a haste creature, this soul flare would have dealt eight points of damage, and uh, they would have been dead. So we'll resolve Ashiok. We'll get these two cards out of their graveyard, but I don't think that's going to matter, and I don't know that them search. I didn't. I don't think we really saw any search effects out of them, so. We had a good Soul Flare hand. <laughs> we did not necessarily have a great interaction hand, so we'll mill ourselves here. And there's the Questing Beast, just a little too far down. All right, time to sit back and hope our opponent doesn't kill us. But, uh, like I said, hope's not particularly high, especially as that Thassa's Oracle hits the graveyard. You know... They're probably only running one. If that had been in the graveyard before, we could have Ashiok'd it away. They would have been in some trouble. I guess as it stands now, they either kill us or they don't. So if they are going to kill us, they need a fourth land and a hidden shrink. So, and an underworld breach. So like I said, they need a lot. And they don't have either of those cards in their graveyard. So they have to play fourth land Play Hidden Shrinks to untap the two. That set, that Then you have access to Chronic Flood and Hidden Shrinks. Then you play Underworld Breach with your two mana, and you're there, right? I, I believe that's what they have to have. Um, or they're just dead. They're, they're dead because Ashiok exiles Thassa's Oracle, but they're also just dead to obviously the, the Soul Flayer in play. So it, it is good for us if they had something to deal with Soul Flayer, then Ashiok still gets them. Uh, I have to say, though, opting there for them... Probably not a great sign. Yeah, and that's that's it. They don't have it. So, all right. We're going to get a shot at another game here. I still believe that none of these cards help. So, good enough. Yeah, it's Savage Summoning I'm a little questioning on. I do, maybe I don't want to care about that, and I want the Rankle. But it's really good. It's really good if you have three mana. You just play Savage Summoning, and then you play... Soul Flare, and you just don't have to worry about anything. Not to mention, you can play it in their incept if you really need to. Oh my gosh, I cannot keep this hand as much as I want to. We don't have double black for Soul Flare. We don't have any way to get rid of those Altapas. That's a mulligan. Oof. Oh, well, this is a keep, but I don't. I'm not thrilled with it, but it is a keep. I just don't think we can. I just don't think we can mulligan this hand. I have Lotleth Troll to throw everything away, and then I have Grapple with the Past to try to find something. You know, we're going to put pressure on, hopefully, with Lotleth Troll if it doesn't get censored, but uh, this is our deck. So, obviously, we want Thoughtseize. There's Woodland Cemetery. Let's see what we can do. I don't know that I'd have the luxury of... Carrying if Lotleth Troll gets censored, I think we, we probably just have to start putting pressure on. If he gets censored, then, hey, that means they're not cycling the censor, right? And for what it's worth, I guess we have the grapple to get it back later? All right, there we go. It's an omen of the sea. And sometimes, this is a thing, I... I got this, I picked this up from a pro at, at some event, and I don't recall who, but 
they just said sometimes you just got to jam, right? You know, sometimes you you just get, tie yourself up in circles. You tie yourself up in knots trying to play around everything your opponent could possibly have. And you just say, what if they have this? What if they have that? And you spend all this time trying to do, you know, this this complicated math, for lack of a better term, of the, the percentages of things you can play around. Sometimes you just have to put the pressure on them, especially, I think, when your opponent is playing. Um, ooh, that's a nice draw. I don't want to say janky because I don't think jank is the word for what they're playing, but a deck that really needs a lot of pieces and a lot of things to go right for it, just make them have it, you know? Yeah. We are we are the beatdown is another way to look at it, right? We need to put the pressure on them, and here you go. They had the Underworld Breach, so we were, they were actually just going to untap and kill us, right? I guess if they drew a fourth land, they were going to, yeah, but we take the Underworld Breach here, and I think it's much harder for them to do. It was a very nice draw. All right, I'll pitch the... So top of for sure. Let me go on and go ahead and uh, grapple with the pass now, because if we don't hit Soul Flayer, we did not. Um, okay. I guess I'll take the Questing Beast. Well, this works out too. I get a still pitch. I was debating whether or not I wanted to pitch this Questing Beast. when I can just play it next turn and attack with it. Does it change the math? This puts our opponent to 16. Yeah, it, it, it adds a turn. So one of the, the, the way I looked at that there is I could throw away this Questing Beast to the Lot with Troll. That means it kills him in four swings. Instead, I can untap, play the Questing Beast, swing for A, and we kill him in two swings, right? So it's the difference between needing three more turns versus needing two more turns, which is really the, the relevant part of that. So... All right, so our opponent has... They still get a mill, though. So, as you can see, they're milling. Um, but I don't think any of their cards natively have escape or anything, right? So I think it, it really... It's a deck that has to have Underworld Breach. In fact, it, some of the versions of, of Soul Flare, this is something you might look at if you're worried about it, play um, Lost Legacy, which I think is it's one of those name a card, take all copies of it out of an opponent's deck. Uh, and that's the... the Name Underworld Breach, they, they think they have a hard time winning. I'm, so, all right, so they got three cards in hand. I think we still know all of them, right? Yep. Well, we're still going to need some turns. You know, we still need another turn here, so we'll see what we can do. There's another grapple if this were to go sideways. But all I can do is attack and just hope your opponent doesn't have it. Which can be a frustrating side of the table to sit on, right? If you, because at this point we basically, really, since turn three, we had no control over the outcome of this game. Yeah, you know, we mulliganed, we thought seized, we did all we could do, and at this point it's just whether or not whether the million scry and draw and opt and whatever effects my opponent has get there, and all they need is an underworld breach, so they get a scry two with their omen of the sea here if they sack it. Uh... Is that what they're going to do? They're doing something else instead. Anyways, if, if they can find it, they got it. If not, we won't even get attacked for lethal. They'll just scoop. Oh, they have dig. They had enough to dig. So, yeah, that's pretty bad for us. All right. So, let's see if they find... Underworld Breach. We know they have the Hidden Strings. You know, did the top billion cards of their library have an Underworld Breach? Probably. I think we're likely dead here. Yep, there you go. So, all right. They have enough to do the thing. There's not a Thassa's Oracle over there, right? So it is in their graveyard. We have died. Unfortunate. I don't know about the Dig Through Time. It's crazy to me. This is, because the thing is, think about Pioneer. I'll, I'll talk for a minute before we scoop. But think about Pioneer. And think about this card in Modern and Legacy and everywhere else it's been banned or restricted or what have you, right? Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise. Just If you were to create a format, and even a format without fetch lands, right? Just even understanding that, you'd have to say Dig Through Time is just so broken. There's no way it could be legal, right? It's, it's, it's been broken in every format it's ever been played in. You can't possibly let this card be legal. <coughs> Excuse me. But thus far, here we are, however many months into Pioneer... We're about to hit the first Pioneer major events with player tours and, and Grand Prix and all of that. 
and dig through time is still legal. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say it'll be legal forever, but it's neat to get a play with it, right? It's cool to get to play with dig through time and treasure cooch, which hasn't even really shown up much at all. Uh, and maybe they'll last and maybe they won't, but it's the format is, is better if they are fair. Um, and like I said, we'll, we'll, we're definitely going to get a lot of data over the next few months uh, to find out if that really is the case. But uh, thus far, that seemed pretty fine. Uh, all right, good for our opponent here. Like I said, we expended all of our control on turn three with that one thought seize after we mulliganed, and we had him next turn. And that's the way it goes sometimes. So I'll let him go ahead and finish it out here. Maybe they, <laughs> the old, maybe they boarded out the combo, the, the winning combo piece, thinking we'd scoop. Now, I, I usually don't make people play out combos online. Oh, blink of the eye. That's a nice one. I usually don't make people play out combos, but this one's actually pretty simple. It's just a simple tap on tap. And I get to see stuff I didn't know, like the fact they're playing blink of an eye. I don't know. I've never played against this deck before. So, in fact, it wasn't possible before Thassa's Oracle. Get your chronic floodings now. We play, somehow played against it twice. That's pretty good. Pretty funny combo. This is really the powerhouse, though, Underworld Breach. You know, Wizards said they were making more of these type of sort of combo-esque cards, and if they become problems, they'll ban them. And that's been their philosophy. Rather than, you know, times in the past, they just want to print them. I mean, it, this is obviously a very dangerous card to print in the sense that it allows repeatable things. I mean, hell, Escape is... It's sort of a dangerous mechanic because it's repeatable and it leads to exactly what we're seeing here. But you know what? I like it. I don't mind. And this is my perspective. I don't mind if occasionally you have to ban cards because they end up being too good. But Fires of Invention is a card that I don't think would have always been printed in Magic. And I, I don't know about in Standard, but at least it's been it's been cool in Pioneer and Modern. Uh, and Underworld Breach, I think, might end up filling the same niche because it does have a cost. And look what our opponent had to do here. They had to they had to put together hidden shrinks and chronic flooding and enchantment on a land. You know, it's this combo would have been broken up at any point by a naturalize. Okay, so it, there's a real deck building cost to doing this. So you know what? I think it's kind of cool when it when it works out. Maybe if this deck goes on to become crazy good or something and play against this every other round, I'll get tired of it. But for now, props to my opponent for winning with a merfolk. Always got to like that. Everybody, I'm Corbin Hostler. This is Punting Pioneer. Thank you for watching Golgari Soul Flare here on Cool Stuff. I'll see you next week.